Hi, this is Paul Haar from the Saxophonist Magazine. I'm here with a playtest and review of the KW1 Turbo 3D printed mouthpiece from Gary Seagal. You know, I'll never forget the first time I heard the name Seagal. I thought it was a joke. Uh, we had a new student in our studio. He was like 1990, 91. And he had this really cool looking mouthpiece with a built-in ligature. And I said, hey, you sound great. What are you playing on? And he says, I'm playing on a Steven Seagal. And I thought it was a joke. He had made a mistake. He was referencing the action hero, uh, booby star, uh, Steven Seagal. And so I found out he meant Gary Seagal. And you have to remember during this time, if you played a, a jazz mouthpiece, you played one of four mouthpieces. You either played on an Autolink, a Berg Larsen, 
a Dukov, or a Meyer. That's what we had. We didn't have a lot of micro brand mouthpieces. In fact, the only one I can think of during that time was Dave Gardala. So I found out the name Gary Segal. I reached out to him and I ordered this mouthpiece here. This is the Super Gons. These things were CNC machined. Uh, no one was really doing that. They were as heavy as a rail and they had a built-in ligature. This one doesn't have it anymore, but they were great. Uh, and I played on it for quite a while and then got rid of it like I have so many great mouthpieces in a myriad of trades and sales to try to find the perfect mouthpiece. Well, Gary continued to make mouthpieces for people like Jerry Berganzi, Kirk Whalen, Mike Brecker, etc. And I was aware that he was making mouthpieces, but I was on to the next new thing that I would try and swear by and then sell about six months later. So when Gary contacted me, he asked if I knew about his work, and I thought, man, here's a blast from the past. Of course I do. <clears throat> he said, well, I'm still making CNC machine mouthpieces, but I'm also now making 3D printed mouthpieces. So if it's possible to be kind of like the new kid on the block with 35 years of history, that's how I kind of viewed it. And he says, you know, I have uh, over 11 models and it comes in 10 colors. And um, they're 3D printed replicas of all my great mouthpieces. So he sent me a few <clears throat> and the uh, this one here, uh, the KW1 Turbo, which was uh, pat patented after the, the Kirk Whalum mouthpiece that he um, made for Kirk for a number of years, uh, was the one that really just made an amazing impression on me. Um, this, what makes this mouthpiece different is it's not 3D printed using your typical resins or plastics. This is a 3D printed mouthpiece that's made out of carbon fiber. And that is a material that's incredibly light, inc incredibly strong. But uh, from what I understand, Gary had to really formulate and find the right blend of materials because most of the carbon fiber that would be used in a 3D printed machine couldn't withstand the heat of the 3D printing. Well, let me tell you something. He really, really found the formula. Um, this is a mouthpiece that I have to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting it to be as wonderful as it played. Um, it is, uh, as you can tell, a beautiful dark black, which, you know, it seems strange when you have over 10 colors that you can have uh, for 3D printed mouthpieces, I would get excited about a carbon fiber black, but I am. It's incredibly light. I mean, in comparison to this one, it feels like I've almost got a one pound weight versus like a feather. Um, it comes with an integrated ligature. We'll talk a little more about that. But this mouthpiece has, you know, we always want to compare mouthpieces to other mouthpieces to try to give some frame of reference. And I have to tell you, um, this particular mouthpiece um, gives me so many qualities and elements and options that I really can't categorize it. Um, it does have a woodiness and kind of a smokiness to it that reminds me of a, of a slant link. Um, it has a long, maybe we can see it here, a long baffle that slants the whole way and then goes into, if we can see it there, a bullet chamber. So it has that quality of a Berg Larson. Uh, has fatter rails and a nice fat tip. Very, very flat uh, table. I was really remarkably surprised at that. Um, the beak is a little fatter than I'm used to, but it was comfortable. Um, this one does not have a bite plate. You can order it with a bite plate. I personally don't have a problem with this. Uh, now, if it was metal, I probably would. Um, but this is perfectly fine. You can see where my teeth marks have kind of polished it a little bit. It has a really, really nice fluted end to it so I can adjust the mouthpiece real well. And with the integrated ligature, if you so choose to get it, you don't have to worry about moving the mouthpiece and then moving the ligature. Um, I will tell you that the impression that I got was uh, quite favorable. I really enjoyed the attack. It was an immediate attack. Um, as you can hear on the uh, recordings previous to this, to my speaking, 
you could hear it has a tremendously full range. I felt like I had a wonderful complement of overtones, particularly in the mid-low range, uh, that mid-range. I felt like it had this fat punch to it without it being obtrusive. Uh, I was able to completely flex the sound so I can go from a, a bright, a honky, uh, Pete Chrisley attacking sound to more of a heathery Stan Getz sound. I love a mouthpiece that allows me that flexibility. That's just my personal choice. Um, something that I can tell you as a compliment to this mouthpiece um, is the fact that when I'm playing, I don't feel like I'm playing anything. I feel like it's an extension of me. And for me, that's what I'm looking for in a mouthpiece. I'm not looking for something that produces a sound that I can think, okay, now here's how I can control it. I want it to be something that I don't really notice. Um, I will tell you there are a few things about the mouthpiece <clears throat> that can be a challenge. Uh, the way that Seagal designs his mouthpieces, it's an optical illusion that the mouthpiece actually feels like it's getting bigger or looks like it's getting bigger. It isn't. It's just the way the uh, the optics of how the construction is. So I forgot that I had to be very mindful of that when adjusting the reed. It didn't cause a real big problem, but it uh, it's something that I remembered. The other thing that I remembered is this is a really fine integrated ligature. If I take it off, you can see it's kind of like the auto link ligature with the single screw. Um, something that I remember from from years and years ago is these fit in the in the tracks pretty well, but you could also be uh, putting your your ligature on or your your reed on, and if you don't have a hold of the ligature, it will fall off sometimes. So you want to what we used to do was we'd take a little bead of super glue and put it right there, and after we do that after we put the the ligature on, and then we just kind of put a little bead of putty or super glue here just to keep it on. But it's just something to be aware of. The size of the the mouthpiece is kind of in between an alto and a soprano mouthpiece. So alto ligatures didn't really fit it all that well. Um, and soprano ligatures were too small. Let me grab one right here. Um, this was one that actually we were in the midst of play testing. This is a bamboo Nova ligature. And because of the stretchy nature of the fabric, it fit perfectly. Uh, I will tell you that uh, having a different ligature is going to change the complexity of the sound a little bit. Um, I was very happy with the included um, ligature that came with it, and it came with a plastic cap. Overall, I was impressed with the tonal flexibility, the attack, the response, the pitch, um, and most importantly, the fact that I could do whatever I wanted to sonically with the... Uh, with the mouthpiece and it seems like it's funny to, to, to say new mouthpiece from a guy who's been making them for about 35 years but he has um he has one that uh, stefano bedetti is is using right now called the retro that seems to be getting a lot of um play hopefully we could do a review of that sometime in the future um the price of these is going to be a little bit higher than what you might think for a 3d printed mouthpiece this one is right around $430. Now, for some of you, that's going to be a, like, what are you talking about? $430 for a 3D printed mouthpiece? Well, first of all, these are also, uh, once they come out of the machine, uh, they are hand polished and hand finished, so there are no rough marks. You don't hear any whoosh in your playing um, that you could typically hear from a 3D printed mouthpiece. Um, remember that you're not only paying for <clears throat> the design and the intelligence behind the mouthpiece, but in this case, you're paying for the carbon fiber technology that comes with it, which is, you know, typically would take about three to four times longer to print and make a, a 3D printed carbon fiber mouthpiece than it would be a regular resin or plastic mouthpiece. Um, so if you get the carbon fiber version, no, you're not gonna be able to get it in pink or fuchsia or whatever. But if you get these mouthpieces in other colors, the, the price will be a little lower. Um, I think he's running a deal right now that if you mention that you saw this review, the price is around $350 with the included ligature. So that's certainly something well worth it to check out. I will tell you, um, I love being surprised. And this mouthpiece really surprised me. Um, I'm enjoying it. It gives me all the very uh, characteristic sounds that I have in my head. Um, it is well made. 
Uh, it's a name that I trusted. And, you know, the other thing I really like about it is that this thing has a lifetime guarantee. If for any reason anything warps or changes, call up Gary, you're going to get a new mouthpiece. Um, I think this is a really nice find and a, and a pleasant surprise for 2020 in a year that the surprises haven't been all that great. So to learn more, a little more in-depth review, including some incredible photos of the um, of the uh, KW1 Turbo, please go to www.thesaxophonist.org. Thank <laughs> you.